Author John Green uses his hometown of Indianapolis as the primary setting of his bestseller, The Fault in Our Stars. Here at the art exhibit of Funky Bones, central characters Hazel Grace and Augustus Waters have a romantic date. With affordable prices, Devaro Downtown is the perfect time to eat at the best and newest restaurants in Indy, including here at the Grub House. With only a week to go until the Primetime Emmy Awards, it's time to binge watch the best of the best. This year, three new shows are major contenders to take home the top prizes. Fargo, Orange is the New Black, and True Detective. All right. Uh, maybe you. Oh, is that rolling? Should, oh, I, enter, yeah, should I enter again? <laughs> they rolled on us entering. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's better. Works. How did you four start this show? We're in a comedy troupe called the Tenderloins. Uh, we've been friends since high school, and we've been in the comedy troupe for 13 years. And we sat around one day. <laughs> it's, it's not that exciting. We we're sat literally on a couch. And we're Much like, like this. We got to think of uh, another way to get on TV because we we had a few sketch shows. And we, we did pilots, but they didn't, they didn't go to series. So we kind of wanted to think of something that wasn't scripted, that we could be ourselves in, and kind of came up with this idea. I mean, we've been messing with each other since high school. I mean, we were four friends from high school, literally. Met freshman year of high school, and uh, we just wanted to do something that would be natural. So we just always mess with each other, and that's how it came about. How hard did you four push for this show, since you guys are also executive producers? We killed a man. Is that what I think that's what he means? I mean, did we just we, yeah, we stabbed a man. <laughs> we stabbed a man. To death. Yeah, to death. Uh, how hard did we have to push? To get this show on True TV. Uh, it wasn't hard at all. Actually, it was the it was the best pitch meeting that we that ever happened. Yeah. The, the woman, a lovely woman named Marissa, who we who handles that acquisitions for True, was crying with laughter watching the pitch tape that we had made. And in fact, it was made, played it again and brought people into the office to watch it. And when we left, she goes, please do not bring this show to anyone else. Yeah. I'm going to get a deal for you guys. So it was easy. <laughs> it's not, it never goes like it that. It does it not never, ever never go really goes like that. Really and then since we created the concept and we are uh, in it and, you know, we also write for the show and all that, executive producer just came along with the whole package deal. So The first season was watched by over 32 million fans. What's your reaction to that? Did you expect it to be that That's big? Right. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Yeah, That's all right. Whatever. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, well, they yeah. found it. There's six billion people on Earth. By numbers. Right. Two million. I think they're just lazy. Actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. Else? No. It's crazy. Right? We, you never know who, if anyone's gonna watch. That's, that's party a, foul. Excuse me, but that's a. You have. Do you, can you beep? Do you have beeping technology? Hold on. That's move. Hey, what's up, Mar? We're in the middle of the interview right now. <laughs> that's what that's that's what usually happens yeah, when that happens. Uh, yeah, whenever Murray calls, we just hang up. Yeah. Never know, never know who's gonna watch. So yes. uh, overwhelmed by anyone watching. We, we've gotten some odd celebrities out there that wouldn't you wouldn't think would watch it or know it. Yeah, tell us that they're big fans of it. So it's exciting. Yeah. So yeah. who are some of those celebrities? Like? Uh, well, Rosie O'Donnell. Rosie O'Donnell. This is actually a new a new one that uh, they actually uh, uh, hooked up on Twitter. I don't know if you saw the episode where we. Made Q uh, put up an eye test sign that said he looks like uh, fat Rosie. We think O'Donnell. he looks like like a fat version of Rosie O'Donnell. Right. Q is is Q is fat. Fat, right? Oh, it keeps going though. Keep going. It doesn't just end there. <laughs> like Rosie O, like the person. Like, yes, exactly. Like a fat Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> <laughs> True or false? Yes. 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 Yes
uh, has guests on and talks about it. That's over. That's over. It's over. It's a different show. It's over. Our okay. show. Okay. Uh, our show so. starts with a plane crash on a mysterious island. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I think you guys smoke, are mixed up. That's no. a different one. The smoke monster. That's, that's lost. We're all dead in the end. <laughs> no, that's not. That's oh. not that. Now people didn't see that. Ruined. Okay. Oh. Our, our show. Joe plays an animated baby and Murray's an animated dog. And they're friends. And is that that's that's a, not even a movie. <laughs> that's, that's not even a movie. show. It's it? Family Guy. Is it? Oh, I think you're doing Come Snoopy. On. I think you're doing Snoopy. Yeah. Charlie oh, Brown. All right. Uh, it's a hidden camera show. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's like a reverse prank show where we kind of challenge each other to see who can do the best in really awkward situations. And if you don't do the best, you get punished at the end of the episode. So it mixes like improv and hidden camera, and it's also I guess a show about like. Our relationships too, because that well, yeah, that's our show. Yeah. No. What? I like the no, that's, show. That's the Ed Sullivan show. <laughs> yeah, that was the Ed Sullivan show. And, and in the end, we're all dead anyway. So <laughs> it's actually similar to Lawrence. Do you have any favorite challenges you've done or embarrassing moments to have the other people do? Oh yeah. There's been a lot of big moments. I think one of the favorite ones of ours is uh, from our first season when uh, Sal um, had to give a a talk to a group uh, book signing. Uh, where he yeah. was a new author, it was one of his punishments, and he went out and we told him, so I gotta read an excerpt of this book, and we sent him out with a book, and when he walked out and he opened the book, he realized that the book was blank. So he's standing in front of a crowd of 20 people waiting for him to speak and read an excerpt, and the, the uh, book was blank, and... It was I, hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of the hardest times I think that was... <laughs> it was great. Yeah, it was just a great moment to really screw him for messing up and losing. Yeah, yeah this, this is a lot of good moments. We all, we've all gotten each other a, a good amount. Good amount. So. Yeah. Yeah. Sal, uh, where did you learn your dance moves when you go up and dance in front of people at the park? Excuse me. <laughs> he went to a shimmy. <laughs> Who is going to break first? Oh, no. <laughs> he was switched it up. South Park Mexican, so that helps. <laughs> no, 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 that's good. Uh, oh, Mexicans known for the, the dancing abilities. Oh yeah, they, they, no, they you mean Latin I'm blood. half Latino and I have a, yeah, that's where you think I get my, my rhythm from. Yeah, but the Mexicans specifically. But I'm not Mexican. Well, I don't know what your <laughs> rhythm that is. We've question. known each other for 23 years. Do you yeah. like uh, soccer? What's that? No, not at all. What kind of Mexican are you? <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I don't know where I got it from. I uh, when I was born, I just had the rhythm in me. Why are you so insulted to be called Mexican? Are you racist? Are you a racist <laughs> to Mexicans? I'm very You're insulted. racist Mexican. <laughs> You're racist against yourself. That's you sad. because his dad can't dance. So it's weird. I must have gave him the mother's side. My dad yeah. can dance too, which is odd. Can yeah. What? Yeah, my dad can dance. Yeah. <laughs> Trevor, I'm going to keep going with this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Who is Larry? Larry is a uh, was on the crew of our show. He's a great little Italian bald guy who was always in a hurry. Like, he's one of those guys that was always, like, everything was very critical, and he was very, like, whenever you asked him if he needed anything, be like, Larry, we got to, you know, get this thing. He's like, all right, I'm, going, I'm on my way to the truck. And he would just be very animated. So we just start, as a joke, like, always yelling at him to make him get more amped, like, about anything. Like, Larry, where's the pencils? Or whatever we'd yell at him. <laughs> so Larry, Larry, Larry. And then the first time in the show, I actually caught him out of the corner of my eye the first time I called for him was in the... Um, was in the shoe store. I don't know if you saw that episode. There was a shoe store where I needed a size seven. And they tell me to start screaming. And I saw Larry out of the corner of my eye and it just made me yell Larry. Aslet size seven. Give it again, get in face. Larry, I need Aslet size seven. It's a good pick. Q, you've uh, been in the loser's challenge at the end the least amount of times out of all of you guys. What's your secret? You know uh, people have told me that, yeah. Huh. Uh, skills. <laughs> with a Z at the end, not <laughs> skills with an S. Skills with a Z. Do they pay the bills? The with a Z at the end. Okay. Yes. Yes. You guys okay. have bad grammar. That's no, we're just from the streets. That's misspelled. You guys <laughs> have bad grammar. <laughs> hey. hey. Do you plan on having a third season since the first two have been so Do we successful? Plan on that? I plan on being the next Brad Pitt, <laughs> but I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> you I, gotta know do a of, I gotta do a couple of crunches first. <laughs> No, we, we hope to. I mean, we that's what we would like to do. Yeah, we're just hoping for more episodes. That we can get. I mean, we're having a lot of fun doing it, so we we'll get more. Yeah. We're really hoping to get a season three. Yeah. yeah. What can viewers expect tonight from the improv skit? 
mayhem. Mm. Uh, Lord, this is the first time I've ever been on stage sober, so I don't, I don't even know what, what to say. He's, he doesn't remember any of the shows. Yeah, he's I just, people are like on Twitter, good show. I was yeah. like, oh, sweet. <laughs> was I there? It's like Dr. Jekyll comes out and just does a show and the next day I wake up. The best so, part about the live show, I think, is uh, it's really it goes back a little bit to our roots. We performed as a, the Tenderloins as a live comedy troupe for a, a long time. So to be able to get out there and just be spontaneous and actually meet fans and get the energy in a room is a lot of fun. So we basically just roll with the punches and it has everything from, uh, you know, little video clips. It's really interactive video clips we've done, uh, you know, a little bit of behind the scenes from the show we talk about. Anything goes. We delivered a baby last uh, last show. Yeah. We delivered a baby. C-section too. Yeah. It's crazy. But it was a Mexican baby, so Sal. Twins. <laughs> we delivered twins C-section. Twin Mexican babies. Twin Mexican babies. We delivered twin Mijo Mexican Mijo. babies <laughs> via C-section before yeah, yeah, yeah. the last show even started. That's right. Right. That's right. right. Do you have any other appearances coming up after this one? Yes! Do we? What? We do? Yeah, we yeah, we're, we're, we're booking all over I mean, I'll be appearing on my We're going to do your house. We're going to do the University of Indianapolis Wednesday. Okay. Wednesday will be there. <laughs> we are playing. Uh, we are at, doing uh, a couple of parents. We're playing at the Bellagio. Right. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. We, we're we, playing. We, we're playing the Kremlin no. in Moscow. We, no. we have the not, main room. We, we have a website, uh, the tenderloins. The tenderloins .com, yeah. and it has our we, our extensive tour dates. We'll be in Minnesota and uh, Nashville and Des Moines and Chicago again and all over the place. And Iceland. Yes. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. We, we're trying to keep it going. Yeah. Although the name is deceiving, the Children's Museum is certainly a place for everyone. The museum has been chosen as one of the best overall museums in the nation. Famous attractions include the Carousel Wishes and Dreams, Take Me There Egypt, All Aboard Train Station, and Fireworks of Glass, which is made of over 3,200 pieces of glass. Vice President of Experiment Design and Family Learning Jennifer Pace Robinson explained why the Children's Museum is even a place for college students. We've got really cool things. We have a new archaeology exhibit. We've got coins that are coming up from the Caribbean. We've got a shipwreck site. We've got a mummy's tomb that's a real replication of a real tomb in the Valley of the Kings. And so college students, you're at a time in your life where you're able to study all this stuff. And either you're majoring in something really cool or you're taking some really fun electives. And we have all that content here. The newest exhibit is called Hot Wheels for Real. Life-size versions of the model toys are for view and you can customize your own car. I caught up with someone who is really a big fan of the exhibit. The power of children gives personal experiences of three brave children who took a stand. Anne Frank hid from Nazi soldiers during the Holocaust. Ruby Bridges fought for her right to attend an all-white school. And Ryan White was the first child diagnosed with AIDS. This exhibit has the powerful message that anyone can make a difference. Whether you are a college student or a toddler, the Children's Museum has something for everyone to enjoy. For more information about the museum, log on to childrensmuseum.org. Trevor Cox, UNDTV. The National Broadway Tour of Green Day's American Idiot is coming to Indianapolis. American Idiot is a sung-through musical adapted from the band's Grammy-winning album. The story follows three friends, Johnny, Will, and Tunny, as they struggle to deal with the monotony of suburbia and restrictive parental authority. It's really, it really tells the story of three kids that we're going through that kind of turbulent time after, right after 9-11, just graduated high school. Um, they all go their separate ways and all end up coming back together at the end of the show. And it's, it really tells, it portrays our generation after 9-11 really well in how we dealt with it. The show premiered in 2009 at the Berkeley Repertory Theater and quickly became the top grossing show in the theater's history. The following year, it became a hit on Broadway at the St. James Theater the musical has been nominated for and won several awards, including a Drama Desk Award, two Tonys, and the Grammy for Best Musical Show Album in 2011. American Idiot is at the Clues Memorial Hall April 2nd to April 7th. We're here with Trent Saunders. Thanks for coming in. Of course. So, American Idiot is here right now in Indianapolis. Give us a preview of the show for people who might not know what it's like. Um, well, it's, it's, it's cool fusion of two things, really. You know, the musical theater aside, we're telling this awesome story, this coming-of-age story about three guys from uh, post-9-11 America, and they're from the suburbs, and they're basically all trying to escape 
this overstimulated society that we live in and find who they are, you know, in, in various three different ways because they wind up going on different quests. Um, I follow, it fall into the mate with the main guy, and I'm kind of the influence that he finds to, to help him find himself, and I lead him down the path of, you know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Um, so it's, it's a good time, and uh, it, it's a really great story um, that I think is cool, and a lot of musical theater people will connect with. But there's also the side that it's obviously Green Day music, mm -hmm. um, which a, a many know and love. You know, yeah. it's a Grammy winning album. Um, so we have a lot of fans of the music come, and we've got a lot of musical theater people who really haven't heard this music before, but it's, it's a lot of fun to, to fuse those two audiences. Mm -hmm. Most people thinking of that album when it came out in the early 2000s wouldn't think of it being so brought together to put into a musical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Explain how the music all flows together in a musical that you guys did. Well, you know, I... I I watched an interview with Billy Joe where he was responding to, I guess, the critics who were uh, attacking him for, for starting a musical, you know, with, with uh, punk rock music. Everyone was like, that's not punk rock. And he was like, well, the entire idea of being punk rock is to break out of the box. So what is more punk rock than doing something that no one ever expected? And, and you know, he was always influenced by, by uh, he says, West Side Story and the Who's Tommy, of course, and, yep. and all of these rock musicals. Um, so I think, I think that it's, it's cool that, that it's able to break out of the box in that way. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely different than all musicals. It yeah. won a Tony Award for its lighting, its staging. Yeah. It just seems like a really cool show. Yeah, it's really, it's really an incredible piece to be a part of because you know, there, there's a truth to the story that I think is overly dramatized in a lot of other pieces. You know, the, 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 the true romantic side of drug addiction. You know, that, that there is a reason that people fall, fall into those, those habits, and there's a reason that they can't get out of them. And um, I think it. it it doesn't necessarily explore positive side of drug use, but it, it explores the, the true why it's so titillating and why it's so enticing. You know? And that's where your character, and Jimmy, comes in. that's where I come in. in. Yep. <laughs> so along with that, where do you guys go after this? Uh, I, we go, the closest place I know that we go to is Chicago. We go to Milwaukee soon. Um, we are really all over the map. Um, I literally just get on a bus when they tell me to get on a bus yep. and I go to the next Come and city. go. <laughs> you know, I, I, I take show by show. Yeah. So relating this as a university, why should college students come to this? Why is it relatable? You know, obviously, uh, I, I just graduated college last year and, um, and the music, hands down, is, is, is relatable. I mean, we, we grew up with Green Day. Yep. We, we know who they are and this music. I mean, I, even I, who wasn't a huge Green Day fan, when I saw the show for the first time, knew all the music just through the fact that, you know, it's played on the radio all the time. And, and I swear to God, I feel like the music follows me everywhere. Anytime I go into a cafe, it just yep. starts playing. Um, it, you know, it, it's, it's all really well-known music that, that you wouldn't, you know, even if you don't really listen to Green Day, you may know the stuff. So it's, it's cool and, and worth worth a listen and, and worth jumping into because I think I also think it's a really relatable story. It's something that, you know, every all of us can connect to. Yeah, well that really cool. sounds like a great show. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you so much for of coming course, in. Of course.